This video is gonna be why I no longer contribute to my lifetime ISA and instead favor my other accounts, being my pension and my stocks and shares ISA, not stocks and shares LISA, stocks and shares ISA, the standard stocks and shares ISA. So we're gonna go through all of that in this video. Um, so yeah, I'm also nearly monetized. So even if you don't like this video, just put it on mute and watch it in the background so I get closer to becoming monetized by the end of the year. <laughs> My name is Ryan and this is Making Money Simple. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I try and do one per week. I am also on all the other social medias and also have a number of digital products available. The most recent one being the Stop Waiting Start Investing ebook, which goes through my whole investing philosophy, how I invest. Um, if you don't like it, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk and hopefully a lot of financial education to gain. Now I'm gonna get into why I no longer contribute to my lifetime ISA and instead choose a pension or a stocks and shares ISA. So to bring it back to basics quickly, and this once again is what I go through in my new ebook, there's three steps to investing. Choosing a platform, choosing an account, and then choosing an investment. We're talking here about step number two, choosing an account. So an account is a pension, is a stocks and shares ISA, is a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. The best account for each individual is highly subjective and it depends on your age, your goals, your time frame, your salary, your plans. There's a lot of things that go into it. Personally for me, being 24, the main account I want to prioritize is my stocks and shares ISA because a stocks and shares ISA is flexible in a sense that you can live off of your investments before retirement age. If I'm 30 and I have a million pounds in my stocks and shares ISA, I can start living off of that money today with no tax because I've already paid tax before contributing. On the other hand, with a lifetime ISA, a stocks and shares lifetime ISA, and a pension, you can't access that money until later on in life. So in my pension and my stocks and shares lifetime ISA, both have a million pounds in them at age 30, I then need to wait another 25, 30 years to actually access that money. Of course though, they still have benefits. A pension, you can get an employer match, which is free money. You can also avoid tax today. For a lifetime ISA, you can get free money from the government today. So each type of account has its pros and cons, which is why I was saying it's sort of highly subjective Watch which are the best accounts for you and what order to contribute to them. Personally, my order of contribution is to first of all take advantage of my 6% employer match. For me, it's 6% and that is 100% free money. So every month, I have 12% going into my workplace pension. Also, because it's the pension, I avoid some tax today because your pension contributions are taken out of your gross salary, which means that I have more money compounding over the long term. Obviously, with a pension, you then pay tax in the future. The second account I then contribute to after my employer match is my stocks and shares ISA. So as mentioned, I have to pay tax today and then I contribute to that, but it gives me the flexibility because I can live off of that money before retirement age. Should I ever max out my stocks and shares ISA? What a stupid question that is. Hasn't happened yet, it's on my bucket list. But if I'm able to max out that 20K, I would then go back to my workplace pension and essentially make use of the 40,000 pound pension allowance. After that, that is then when I'd start using general investment accounts, um, which essentially a general investment account has no tax advantages. Um, so that is the way I essentially approach it. So in terms of a stocks and shares LISA, let me tell you how that fits in and why I no longer use one. So this concept may be slightly confusing, but the 25% bonus that you get from a lifetime ISA is equal to 20% tax relief that you get from a pension. I'll put some maths up on the screen which hopefully makes it simple to understand. I'm currently a basic rate taxpayer, but if I contribute to my pension, I get 20% tax relief because it comes out of my gross amount. With a lifetime ISA, if I contribute to that, which comes out of my net pay, I get a 25% bonus from the government. Now the 25% bonus is exactly equal to the 20% tax relief, which is why if you're a basic rate taxpayer, in terms of optimizing your finances, it's essentially the same result. There are obviously some differences with the pensions and licenses and ages you can access them, but in terms of the actual maths, it works out the same. The issue is, hopefully, in the near future, I will be a higher rate taxpayer. When you become a higher rate taxpayer, you then get 40% pension tax relief. So as you can see, that tax relief of 40% massively outweighs the 25% lifetime ISA bonus. 
Just to reiterate, when you're a basic rate taxpayer, the tax relief from a pension and bonus from a lifetime ISA is the same, but if you are a high rate taxpayer, and if you then become an additional rate taxpayer, where you pay 45% income tax, a pension becomes even more tax advantageous because you're essentially avoiding more tax and getting higher rates of tax relief that massively outweigh the 25% lifetime ISA bonus. Now, of course, as I mentioned, this is all highly specific and you sort of need to think what is best for you. Here, we're to only talking about retirement. I'm talking about a pension for retirement and a stocks and shares lifetime ISA for retirement. A cash ISA has great advantages because you can contribute £4,000 worth of cash, get £1,000 cash from the government and then use that for a house. A pension will be locked up until your retirement age. So we're strictly here talking about saving for retirement and a pension versus a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. And as your salary goes up and you enter higher income tax bands, then the pension becomes more and more tax advantageous. But wait, there's more. So now I guess the next question then becomes looking at the stocks and shares ISA versus the stocks and shares LISA. So the stocks and shares standard ISA, as we mentioned, gives huge flexibility. Because we pay tax today, that money then grows tax-free, dividend-free over the years. And if I wanted to live off that money way before retirement age, I can. With a stocks and shares lifetime ISA, you can't access the money until 60. So once again, like a pension, it's sort of locked up. For me personally, because I have aspirations to retire early, hopefully way before retirement age, I want to live off my investments, which is why I prioritize and focus on my stocks and shares ISA after my employer match pension, and also before a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. Well, where I'm probably throwing a lot of terms and a lot of stuff at you here, but essentially the bottom line is, for me personally, a stocks and shares ISA is my main priority because I want to retire early, which is why I favor that over a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. And then a pension um, is what I prioritize over a LISA because it essentially gives me the exact same financial outcome. But hopefully over the years, as I increase my salary and go up to higher tax rate bands, the tax relief, the 40% or maybe even one day the 45% tax relief that I get will much outweigh the lifetime ISA bonus. And of course, there's also the issue of with a lifetime ISA, you know, you contribute £4,000 per year, whereas with a pension, we have a £40,000 allowance. So you can put a lot more money into a pension. Another point to mention here is that if you have a salary sacrifice pension, you can also avoid potentially 12% national insurance, 9% student loan. So if you have a salary sacrifice pension, your tax relief may actually be even more than 20% to begin with. And as we know, as your tax relief increases um, to say 32 or 41%, whatever it is, then that essentially financially, if you're looking at it purely mathematically, that sort of outweighs the 25% bonus that you get from a lifetime ISA. And that essentially is my reasoning why I stopped contributing to a stocks and shares lifetime ISA and now prefer a pension or a standard stocks and shares ISA. Obviously, I'm not hating on the stocks and shares LISAs or people that use them. Um, this is just what I do. And I know when I tweeted about this months ago, I got a lot of questions. So hopefully by going into it in detail now in a video um, will help clear some things up and hopefully help you understand why I no longer use a stocks and shares LISA. But that's not saying it's the wrong decision for you. Using a stocks and shares LISA could be the best decision for you. So it really just depends, as I said, on your salary, your age, your goals, your time frame. There's a lot of things to take into account Account. But for me personally, I want to take advantage of the free money, so I use a workplace pension from my employer, but I also want to retire early, so I want the flexibility from a stocks and shares ISA, which is why they are my two main accounts. If I was self-employed and I didn't have an employer match, I reckon I would just go all in on a stocks and shares ISA because I want to retire early. But yeah, I'm gonna leave this video there. Hopefully this video has been helpful going through LISAs, my portfolio, and why I no longer use my stocks and shares lifetime ISA. Just to reiterate, I have been the whole time talking about stocks and shares LISAs, not cash LISAs. I do think cash LISAs are great for saving for a house and probably the best tool available really to save for a house because of the free money we can get from the government. But yeah, this is obviously quite a subjective uh, topic and quite specific, so any thoughts, please leave them in the comments. Do you use LISAs? Do you not? Do you use a cash one, a stocks and shares one? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and yeah, any questions as always, feel free to let me know as well and I'll help you out. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.